Hello, it's a pleasure to be here to talk about work we've been doing over the last uh, couple of years on the nature of the association of H the human papillomavirus uh, in uh, head and neck cancer. So most cancers over the last uh, several years have been on the decline. One of the few exceptions to that has been oral pharyngeal uh, squamous cell carcinoma, oral pharyngeal cancer, which has been rising since the middle of the 1980s uh, and is projected to uh, continue to increase uh, in the near future. Uh, this has been associated uh, with an increase, a dramatic increase in the percentage of cancers uh, of oral pharyngeal squamous cell carcinomas uh, in which HPV has been found. So in the mid 80s, only about 16% of oral pharyngeal cancers uh, carried uh, human papillomavirus, whereas um, as uh, recently as 2004, over 70% of the cancers are HPV positive. Uh, and that uh, number continues to increase. So we know that human papillomavirus uh, has been associated with cancers, particularly with cervical cancer. Uh, and from uh, work on cervical cancer, we know a lot about how HPV might interact with the genome and its role that it might play uh, in driving a tumorigenesis. Uh, in cervical cancer, HPV initially infects the epithelial cells and resides uh, as an extra chromosomal element, as an episome, basically, replicating independently of the chromosomes. Uh, as the cancer progresses, progresses, HPV becomes integrated, and during that integration, the, one of the viral genes is often lost, uh, in this case, the E2 viral gene. That leads to increased expression of two um, viral encoded oncogenes, the E6 and E7 oncogenes, which respectively inactivate RB uh, and P53. RB is a cell cycle uh, inhibitor, so that it's, its inactivation leads to uncontrolled cell cycle, uh, and E7 inactivates P53, uh, the guardian of the genome, so that um, the loss of P53 often leads to increased genome instability. Uh, which further drives the cancer. Um, so that's what's known about HPV with, uh, as it was analyzed in cervical cancer. And studies to date suggest that the story is similar uh, in oral pharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma, uh, but not identical. Uh, and one of the uh, difficulties is actually understanding uh, and being able to determine uh, in a particular cancer and a particular tumor whether the uh, human papillomavirus is integrated or remains episomal. So we have been using uh, the new optical mapping technology developed by BioNano in order to address that question, not only to understand the state of the HPV uh, in the human genome in these tumors, uh, but also the state of the human genome uh, in those tumors as well. So we've been applying uh, optical genome mapping or whole genome imaging uh, to a number of oral pharyngeal squamous carcinomas uh, using uh, made feasible uh, by the recent development uh, that we worked with uh, investigators at BioNano to develop. Uh, that is uh, the ability to extract high molecular DNA uh, from uh, solid tumors. Um, this has been made it possible uh, to treat solid tumors much in the way we've been able to analyze uh, liquid tumors such as leukemias by being able to get uh, uh, identify almost the entire karyotype uh, of these um, solid tumors. So we have applied that technology again, as I said, to squamous cell carcinomas of the oral pharyngeal uh, and combine that with whole genome sequencing. So we merge the data we generate from the 
optical mapping and the whole genome sequencing to identify uh, all of the structural variants uh, as well as single nucleotide polymorphisms that are present in those tumors. We, at the same time, uh, we do the same analysis on blood samples taken from those same patients. Uh, and so we can identify uh, in the tumor data, uh, those structural variants or, or, whole, or single nucleotide polymorphisms that are polymorphisms and retain only those that are somatic mutations. So in applying those to a number of tumors, um, we've found some uh, very intriguing uh, information that I'll take you through now. So our first patient was a 67-year-old male uh, with a, a growing neck mass, uh, which is uh, evident in this MRI uh, over here on the right. You can see on the left side of the, of the uh, neck, uh, this large tumor. Uh, on excision and biopsy of both the tumor and the lymph nodes, um, it was clear that these, uh, this tumor was P16 positive, which is a good indication that it's HPV positive. Um, the whole genome sequencing, uh, the whole genome imaging uh, revealed uh, the structural variants that are shown in the circles plot, which I'm sure you've seen uh, in many of the talks uh, presented previously. Uh, in the circles plot, the uh, chromosomes are arranged in a clockwise fashion from chromosome one around to the X chromosomes. On the inner portion of the circle are the uh, translocations and inversions. In the next ring are the, uh, as indicated, the copy number uh, of those uh, chromosomes. Uh, and then in the middle ring are shown the insertions, deletions, uh, duplications. Etc. cetera. Uh, so uh, as you can see in this tumor, there are a number of ins uh, translocations and inversions, as well as a number of insertions and deletions. From the whole genome sequencing, we we're able to identify both human and tumor uh, reads. Uh, and in addition to identify actually reads in which the uh, tumor sequences uh, were adjacent to the viral sequences, uh, which is an indication uh, that the HPV genome is integrated in those cases. Uh, and the tumor sequences, the human sequences <clears throat> that were adjacent uh, to the HPV uh, uh, genome sequences mapped to chromosome 15. And if we look then at the corresponding region on the uh, obtained by optical mapping, we see at this point uh, an insertion and duplication, which when we, uh, as shown here, and then if we drill down on that from the optical mapping data, the site of integration, uh, we see the structure on the bottom here uh, with uh, eight, two copies of HPV uh, um, inserted in a tandem duplication of the surrounding genome sequences which lead us to suspect that the order of events uh, that led to this structure in the tumor was integration of the HPV genome, followed by mobilization and duplication of the 20 KB region surrounding that insertion, uh, leading to the tandem duplication of the virus and its surrounding sequences. In the second uh, patient that we looked at, a 61-year-old male, uh, we found um, uh, the patient presented with a large mass uh, at the base of the tongue, uh, which is evident uh, uh, over on the right in this PET scan. Again, on excision and biopsy, uh, the tumor was identified as being P16 positive, uh, indicating it's likely HPV positive. In this case, though, uh, the whole genome sequences failed to yield any hybrid human viral sequences, and the optical mapping showed no insertions or duplications within the genome, nor any other structural variants uh, for that matter. We've now been able to apply this to a dozen samples, 11 of which are shown here. Um, and from the whole genome sequencing, we were able to map uh, the sequences of the viral genome 
that were present in these tumors uh, and also identify whether those tumors had HPV integrated into the genome or whether the viral genome remained extra chromosomal. Uh, these uh, ones in violet uh, are uh, tumors that were extra chromosome in which the viral genome remained extra chromosomal. And these um, ones identified in teal uh, are tumors in which the HPV uh, virus uh, genome was integrated. Uh, and uh, in addition to just getting copy number, we could also identify uh, point mutations or variants within the HPV genome. Uh, and what is uh, evident here is that the HPV genomes uh, that were present as episomes were basically um, no, didn't, for, didn't constitute a distinct strain from those in which the HPV was integrated. So that the integrated versus episomal state uh, of the virus is not a consequence of the virus per se, uh, but is uh, um, results from some other uh, extraneous event. And looking then, uh, much as we did in the first tumor at the structure of the genome around the site of integration, uh, we see that uh, in every case in which the virus is integrated, uh, there are significant structural re rearrangements associated uh, with the integration. So this is the event that I showed you initially where the virus integrates and then the uh, 20KB of, of <coughs> human genome around the virus is uh, amplified and duplicated. In a second tumor, uh, we have a similar event in which the virus is integrated. Uh, the 90KB region around the site of integration is mobilized and triplicated uh, in a tandem orientation. In the third case, uh, the virus is actually integrated as a consequence of a three-strand uh, translocation event uh, in which the virus sits at the junction in a translocation between chromosome 11 and chromosome 8 uh, so that the uh, resulting um, chromosome is an 8 11 uh, chimera with the virus uh, at the center uh, of that um, translocation. But at the same time, there was a reciprocal uh, 8 11 translocation, as well as a, a large deletion uh, of sequences on chromosome 11. In a third case, in a fourth case, we have integration of the virus and mobilization of the 30 KB, in this case, leading to five copies of the integrated uh, virus and surrounding sequences, as well as duplication of an adjacent uh, region of the genome. <coughs> we also found in half of the cases that the virus integrates not at a single site, but at two sites in the, at separate, on separate chromosomes in the genome. Uh, in this case, the virus integrates on both on chromosome 20 and on chromosome 11 uh, with a complex um, duplication, again, uh, as an intrachromosomal translocation with the virus sitting at the junction of the head to tail duplication of those uh, host genome sequences. Uh, another case of the virus integrating uh, at two different sites, uh, again, uh, uh, a complicated uh, situation in which the virus is integrating at two separate sites, one on chromosome eight, one on chromosome 19. Again, the virus integrating, integrating at an intrachromosomal translocation uh, at the junction of the head to tail. And then in this final case, a very complex uh, situation uh, in which again, the virus is integrated at the uh, junction of an intrachromosomal translocation with the head to tail duplication and some of the uh, intervening sequences duplicated in a very complex uh, expansion uh, ex uh, of about 2.5 megabases uh, of sequence uh, with 26 different copies uh, of the virus. Uh, I should point out that simply this structure was determined uh, directly from analysis uh, of the optical mapping uh, data uh, so that the optical mapping uh, gave us a very clear indication of the events that were happening 
at the site of integration. But the more striking uh, of, uh, aspect of these is the difference in the whole genome uh, structural variation uh, in the episomal versus the uh, integrated cases. On the top here, on the top row, uh, are the circos plots of the genomes of those tumors in which the virus remains episomal. And as you can see, there are absolutely no translocations uh, or inversions uh, in these uh, genomes and few, if any, insertions or deletions in the genome. On the other hand, in every case in which the virus is integrated, there are a large number of translocations and inversions, as well as a large number of other structural variants, including insertions, deletions, and duplications. Uh, just looking at the numbers, um, these on the left uh, are the uh, integrated, the numbers of insertions, deletion, inversions, duplication, and translocations. Uh, and the <clears throat> cases of episomal um, tumors uh, whereas these on the right uh, are the numbers uh, found in the uh, tumors in which the uh, virus remains episomal. As you can see, there are absolutely no translocations or inversions uh, in the episomal tumors, whereas in all of the uh, integrate cases of integration, there are a large number of uh, integrations. This extends, although not as dramatically, uh, to the point mutations as well. Um, those box samples, uh, what is shown, are the number of somatic point mutations uh, in these tumors. Uh, and uh, as evident uh, by the squares, those that are episomal have on average fewer uh, point mutations uh, than those in which the uh, tumors are um, uh, have integrated HPV. Uh, this structural um, um, instability also extends uh, to a certain extent uh, for uh, somatic point mutations. Uh, those samples boxed here are the ones uh, that are episomal, whereas the others have integrated HPV. What is shown is the number of somatic point mutations uh, of various types uh, in each of the tumors. And as is evident, uh, those tumors with episomal HPV have uh, significantly less uh, uh, point mutations uh, than those with integrated uh, HPV. So this raises the question of cause and effect, and effect. That is, does HPV integration induce genome instability, uh, perhaps as a consequence of increased uh, E7 expression leading to reduced p53 levels, or perhaps to the focal amplification uh, leading to uh, genome-wide uh, instability. On the other hand, it's possible that genome instability actually results in HPV integration, that perhaps some uh, global genome catastrophe generates a number of double-strand breaks that capture the episomal viral genomes that are resident in those tumors. So we don't know the answer to that yet, uh, but our uh, data to date is more consistent with this latter uh, interpretation, basically based on the fact that we see the uh, cases in which the virus is integrated at multiple sites uh, within the genome, which is much more consistent with uh, a concerted a event uh, following a genome catastrophe rather than a sequential events uh, associated with selection for uh, increased viral expression. So what is the consequence uh, of the integration versus episomal state? Uh, these are the uh, outcomes data uh, or the characteristics of the tumors uh, and while we don't have enough data to draw statistically significant events, these data suggest that the um, tumors that are associated with integrated HPV are more aggressive uh, than those associated uh, with the episomal HPV. In particular, if we look at the tumor staging, uh, the 
tumors with integrated HPV have a higher uh, uh, tumor staging than those uh, with episomal HPV. Uh, similarly uh, and relatedly, uh, the mean tumor size uh, of the tumor uh, and the metastases uh, are larger uh, in, for tumors that have integrated HPV uh, than they are with episomal HPV. So in conclusion, uh, we can conclude that we have validated a new technique uh, to utilize optical genomic mapping uh, to construct the genomes of solid tumors. Oops. Optical mapping is able to construct complicated genome alterations that were previously unidentified using whole genome sequencing or even more complicated uh, protocols alone, such as the focal amplifications induced by viral genomes. The optical mapping is a powerful tool for uh, identifying the, and characterizing viral genomes in tumor. Uh, and uh, from our data, uh, from our limited data to date, we can see that HPV integration is strictly associated with significant uh, genome instability. Uh, and our data suggests that that integration uh, is associated uh, with uh, more aggressive tumors. So we think that being able to identify HPV status uh, in these tumors may in fact uh, provide a prognostic uh, and a therapeutic tool uh, for clinical investigators. So with that, I'd like to acknowledge the folks that did the work, uh, those in the Institute for Personalized Medicine and those in the Department of Otolaryngology. So thank you very much for your attention.